What's going on, everybody? I hope you're having an awesome day. The autofocus, I'm trying to focus on this monitor. Here, let me try to shuffle it around. It'll eventually come to me. We'll eventually get this video started. I just, I'm literally moving. Oh, now it locked onto my face. There we go. We are filming on the Canon M50 Mark II. Peter just wanted to say hi real quick. All right, the original M50 is really what I started this YouTube channel with. And honestly, it was a really good camera for the price. It was very simple to use and it just looks good just straight out of camera. This is also a Canon M50 Mark II. Yes, I have two of them, this one and this one, because I kind of broke this one. I mean, still kind of works, but I, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Now, the difference between the original M50 and the M50 Mark II, which came out more recently is, Honestly, I don't know. There's like very little difference, but the price difference is like 20 bucks. So it's almost like, I uh, just might as well just pay a little bit extra and get the, the new stuff. But the reason why I still keep recommending this camera to so many people when there's so many really powerful, awesome, low budget options out there is because it just gives you a really good image very easily. Like right now, this image, pretty good, right? And I did not change any settings. I'm not color grading anything. This entire video is gonna be shot on either this or this Canon M50 Mark II. I'm not gonna color grade anything. It's just straight out of the box color. Recently, the Sony ZV-E10 came out and it is a little bit more expensive than this M50, but it has a lot more power. So where does that leave this Canon M50? We're gonna go over all that stuff, but first we're gonna have Dylan tell you about our sponsor, Storyblocks. And we're gonna be recording this with a bone stock Canon M50 Mark II with the kit lens, everything's auto exposure. The color is auto, the white balance, everything is 100% auto. I'm treating this camera like a point and shoot and here's how it looks. Hi there, I'm friend number two, here to tell you about Storyblocks and their amazing services. Now, I bet you're wondering what happened to my forehead. <laughs> if you think that's bad, you should see the other guy. That's the last time he calls me a goat. I'm not some farm animal with weird eyes. To help me tell these obviously true stories, Storyblocks offers an unlimited all access plan, allowing me to tell my stories exactly the way I want you to hear it. Dramatic music, funny sound effects, with over a million stock assets. The only thing that's stopping me is what's in my own head. Storyblocks is also launching their restock campaign, looking to change the face of stock media. They're doing this by providing content from creators of diverse backgrounds to better reflect the world that we live in. So click the link below and start your creative process today. <laughs> Wait, so it's this, 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 this. Hey, Macarena. It's supposed to go like this, you <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. And we're back. Now, first of all, you gotta admit, Dylan's the best at doing the sponsorship breeds. I think he's just gonna have to do all of them from here on out. But also the footage looked pretty good, especially when you consider that I touched no settings on the camera. I just attached the kit lens, the kit lens on the camera. I hit record. I did put it into 24 frames per second. That's the only thing I changed, but everything, auto exposure, auto white balance, literally touched as little as I could. And it, with the kit lens, I mean, that's why I think the Canon M50 is so good for a total beginner, someone that has never really touched a performance professional camera before and they just want to improve on the image quality. And of course, this being a mirrorless camera, you can improve on it, attach different lenses, learn the settings and grow with it as you go. For example, this Canon M50 Mark II, I have a Viltrox speed booster on there, which gives it more of a full frame look. And I have a Sigma 20 mil F1.4. And as I mentioned, this camera is kind of broken. Well, it's obviously working. I'm recording with it right now, but the back LCD does not work. So I have a an external monitor attached to it so I can reference that. How did I break it? Well, I went to Portland, Oregon for our friend's wedding and it actually felt kind of like a reunion of our friends that went to Mexico with us. I put the Sigma 24 to 70 f2.8 on there and I set the camera to 60p so I could get a little bit of that slow motion. The 60p, I think it looks pretty good. It's still 1080p. You still maintain that autofocus and again, color. I'm not touching any other color in this video. That's definitely going to save me a whole bunch of time and post cruising around exploring the town on those rental scooter things that you got to be careful on those things i was going around getting my shots i felt a little inferior because all of the guys brought their fancy r5s and the a7s and the panasonics and all the full frame stuff but i cruising around with the m50 but it's probably a good thing that i had the the, the cheapest camera because i was riding one-handed and i hit a bump and then i dropped the camera you could kind of see this uh, piece of plastic kind of chipped off. I don't think it's gonna be a major repair. I think it's just replacing this 
blasting. I don't know. Kind of sad about it because this is the lens that I did personally buy. It wasn't sent to me or anything like that. So <laughs> tears. But yeah, in terms of this camera, I might go ahead and set it up as like a permanent overhead angle. I might set it up somewhere high because those I don't really use the LCD anyways. I'll feed that down to a monitor regardless. So as long as I don't need the LCD, this camera is still useful to me. So, you know, it could have been a lot worse. Maybe wear neck straps if you're riding scooter. Actually, you know what? If you're riding a scooter, just put both hands on the handlebars. That's the safest. Now, the good news is that these Canon M50s, they're super easy to find. So we realized there was a Best Buy nearby, picked up another one, and we were back in business. And also, we were in Oregon, which has a 0% sales tax. I should have bought like 20 iPhones there. <laughs> Anyways, now it was time for the wedding and I wanted to keep it super simple. So went with just a single prime lens, an 85 F 1.8. It's an EF lens. It's pretty budget friendly. So I took this EF lens and this is an EF. M mount, I think EF mini or EF, I have no idea what it stands for. But anyways, you need an adapter for it. So I used the speed booster. I also set the camera to 120 frames per second and you do lose image stabilization and autofocus. So I was manually focusing this, but let's go ahead and roll the shots. That's 720p footage. Yes, it's only 720p, which is pretty lame, but the footage, it looks decent, right? That's the thing with this Canon M50 is that it's not really a powerful camera, but the footage looks pretty good. It's just a really pleasant camera to use. I mean, everything about it, the, the LCD looks nice. The menu is nice and simple. And of course, just because you can shoot fully automatic with this doesn't mean you always should. While we were shooting Dylan's thing, I was getting a little bit of inconsistencies with the white balance shifting around. And also you could notice that the close up shot is much brighter than the wide shot. And that's because of the way the camera exposes. If I was in manual mode there, I would have definitely locked in that exposure exposure right there in the middle. I thought the close up was a little bit too bright and the wide shot was a little bit too dark. But overall, with all that being said and done, I still think this might be the best bang for the buck beginner camera. Now keep in mind the ZV-E10, it has more performance, but it is a camera that takes a little bit more attention to get really good results out of. And it will surpass what this camera is capable of if you work it right. I feel like there's two types of vloggers, like nerdy people like me where like, I want the best dynamic range. I'm gonna shoot in log so I can color grade it. And I want the best resolution, all that stuff. And yeah, you're gonna get better image quality out of that, but it does also eat into your attention, like the capacity of how many things you can think about. We all have a limit there. So it does eat away at that a little bit. The alternative are the vloggers that are just like, I have no idea what this camera's doing, but it, there's a red dot there. But there's nothing wrong with that, actually. I mean, sure, maybe your white balance or exposure might run wild once in a while, but you have your mind free to not think about it and you can focus on what you're filming and sometimes that's more important. So if that's the kind of vlogger or filmmaker you wanna be, I, I think this might still be the champion of budget cameras. All right, so now I have the 11 to 22 on here and this is exactly how I used to run this vlog camera you can kind of see through the mirror got a big mic up top i'd probably use a smaller microphone if this was my vlog setup because it's the microphone's literally bigger than the camera but yeah this is the setup i used to run i got a little cheap amazon nd filter on here look at what we're riding today hey dylan what's up we rented this because we're doing a shoot this weekend and i want to get some really nice and low car to car shots and there's this nice opening on these polar slingshots that's yeah. different 
<laughs> I wow, know, I thought you knew how to drive stick. I thought I did too. <laughs> just like adjusting to a different stick shift, you know? Yeah, sure, that's what it is. This is gonna be awesome for filming cars because I can just literally hold the camera nice and low and get outside like that. Don't you've driven this for two minutes. What's your review? Maybe a seven. A seven? <laughs> but yeah, as a vlog setup, I feel like this is a pretty nice, simple little solution. And I do have stabilization on to enabled. There's also enhanced, but here, if I do enhance, it's gonna crop in, so ready. And enhanced. So this is the type of stabilization you get out of enhanced. It's probably a bit better, but it does crop in a bit more. Or if I completely turn it off, we punch back out to here. So widest angle with no stabilization, but I'll go back to enabled. So a little bit of a punch in, but not bad, right? And I get that little bit of stabilization. Dylan, I feel like you really want sunglasses. Yeah. Dylan lost his sunglasses recently. Here, you can wear this and you can look okay. cool there. Yeah, that's wow. very fitting for you. Oh yeah, dude, you need to go start a GoFundMe for a new pair of glasses. But a big crop definitely comes when you go into 4K. So I don't really use 4K with this camera. I mean, I guess it's all right, but it's just it's just a heavy crop. So here, we go ahead and punch into 4K real quick. And there we go. So now we're in 4K. Wow, well, yeah, it's a pretty big crop. I'm almost in a close-up now. Even I'm at uh, 11 mil. For me, even when I'm shooting with my C70 or A7, I'm still shooting HD most of the time. And yeah, we're back in HD. This is where I personally feel comfortable. Man, Dylan, you look so cool with those sunglasses. That's right. You gotta pull a couple screen grabs out of this and okay. put it on Tinder. But overall, this camera, super easy to use. Like Dylan, he doesn't really know much about cameras, but here, you could just take it and you could vlog with it. So. Oh, I haven't broken it yet. Yeah, Tight. If, you're, if you're like, like Dylan. Yeah, pretty easy, nice and light. Now I'm a vlogger. vlogger. Put that on your LinkedIn, just like oh, I'm Professional a vlogger. vlogger. Yeah. All right, so that just about wraps it up, but we are funding another project for the potato farm. Whose project are we funding this time? Ben Elephison of Iowa. Ben says, my friends and I have these trips we go on called mystery trips where one of us gets randomly selected out of a hat to plan the next trip. We set a per person budget amount for all costs, like flights, accommodation, food, all that. And uh, the person plans everything without telling everyone else. The rest of the group gets a packing list a week before the trip, but they don't know where they're going until they show up at the airport ready for the flight. It's pretty exciting and he's been selected as a lucky planner for the next trip. Want to use the budget, you know, to show how awesome this is. And yeah, excited to see that. That actually sounds fun. Yeah. Would you be down to go on a mystery trip where it's just like, oh yeah, show dude. up to the airport and you're like, where are we what going? If you, you get like ready for like a tropical place. Like, no, you're going to the tundra. I feel like, like there's a little bit of pressure though. What if you plan it and everyone shows up and everyone's like, no one wants to go there. You know? Yeah, right? It's like, oh, but the money's spent. So. But that's awesome. That sounds like a cool film to watch. It's almost like a yes theory type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Think, but it'll be cool. Congratulations. We're funding your project. And if you have an idea you want to pitch us, link in description. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Peace. Later. Bye. I think I got cheese on my lip. Oh. These are the best, though. You want a piece? I'll get my own. No, no, no. 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 no.